Hi, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK, around the world, into your homes. Thank you for passing by. I wanted to talk about cancer today because you know why? Because it seems to be a taboo subject. We're always hearing about people dying from cancer. And yet, you know, it's like, oh, shh, shh, you can't talk about it because, you know, you're not quite sure what to say. I think. People don't talk about it because they're afraid. I think, you know, not that you can catch it, it's not contagious, but I think people are really worried because it's non-discriminatory. It, it doesn't discriminate. It can get anybody at any time. And when you see relatives and loved ones all get catched by the big C, it's bound to make you nervous. And that is normal. It's normal to be afraid of what you don't know about. And cancer is one of those things nobody knows about. And it affects so many different parts of your body, from your head to your toe. And so I thought I would do something. I thought I would do something just to make it a bit more friendly. It's not a friendly disease. It's something that can take people away from us and make us feel abandoned by them. It's something that can make us angry. It's something that can make us sad. It's something that can make us frustrated. It's one of those diseases where you grieve even before the person has passed on. And then it's one of those it's one of those illnesses where, you know, it's so uncertain. You don't know whether they're going to come back out of it or you don't know whether they're, they're going to die from it. There are so many people who go into remission and they're completely clean. So it's that not knowing. And I think that is what makes things scary with cancer. And I think people also are a bit worried to broach the subject, especially to somebody who's dying of cancer. Sometimes they feel helpless. They're not quite sure what to say, how to say it. They don't want to say the wrong things. Sometimes they can even think, oh, thank God, it wasn't me. And that can be survivor's guilt. And then they can end up feeling guilty for feeling that way. But it's natural. It's natural when you see somebody who's dying and you kind of think, oh, I'm glad it's not me. You're sad for the person. You empathise with the person. But you have that kind of feeling, oh, thank God, you know. And it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. It's very, very challenging. It's very difficult to behave normally around somebody, especially when it's terminal cancer, because you're, you want to remember them in the best possible way and you want to be able to enjoy them and then you're watching them deteriorate but I think it's best you know when you're going to see somebody who's got cancer you take some photographs of the better times when they looked well and you know so they can see how they looked because they too feel vulnerable and disappointed with themselves they feel as though they're abandoned in their family can you imagine what's going through their minds they don't want to see their family sad and that they they feel the cause of it so it's really important not to be bawling around somebody who's dying of cancer because all you're doing is offloading your trauma onto them and they don't need it they need to know that you're strong and even if you feel weak you just ask them to leave the room you and if you want to have a little cry you leave the hospital bed or wherever they are and you go and have a little cry and you come back as strong as ever and smiling try to make them laugh you know what happens with people with cancer sometimes people are so bloody miserable around them they don't even try to make them laugh and that laughter is healing you can actually heal somebody with laughter so don't be afraid to enjoy yourself around people who've got cancer. You'd be surprised how it would lift their spirit seeing you happy and not depressed. It is hard, I know, because their loved ones, whoever they are, you don't want to see them pass. But you have to remember change is inevitable. Death is inevitable. Trees change from one season to the other. We change from children to adults. And the same with the process of dying. You go from one, to one um, type of being to another, from flesh to spirit. So we're always changing. Life is full of change. So it's about adapting yourself.
to the change and to seeing your loved one change, maybe in structure, maybe their expression, maybe they've lost weight and not looking shocked, not making them feel. Because a lot of times when we see people with cancer, we tend to think about ourselves, really. We're not thinking about the person who has got it. And because we're thinking about ourselves, we don't we can't empathize with what they must be going through. And sometimes it's not the pain. Sometimes they feel as though they've let their loved ones down. So um, I wrote down a few little notes. Um, like I said, fear, because no one knows why some people get it and some people don't. It's almost taboo. People talk about it in a whisper. Um, and, you know, I've got a friend and her, a relative of hers is dying of cancer. It's only got two weeks to live. And she's worried about how to tell her children that they're going to lose their grandfather. And so, um, and I think that's what inspired me to do this because when I was looking up, um, on things about cancer to support people. They have the Macmillan stuff, which is really, really good, but sometimes you want something that is not clinical. You know, you want a non-clinical viewpoint about what to do and how to do it and how to be around people, what kind of support you can give them. And if you're even able to give support, don't knock yourself up if you I mean, don't beat yourself up if you're not the type of person who can be supportive when you're under stress. Because sometimes there's people who just get so emotional, they're no good to anybody. And you just have to accept that that's the way you are, but don't feel guilty about it. You know, you try to go and see a person as long as you can for even if it's a couple of minutes. Because some people think, oh, what can I do? There's nothing I can do. I can't help the person. It's inevitable. I'm not going to go and see them because I can't do anything. And that is the saddest thing for people who are suffering from cancer or who know that they're going to die from cancer, to feel abandoned. And a lot of people do abandon people who have got cancer because they feel helpless. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. And so they stay away. And that's not the answer. Um, so people are worried because cancer reminds them of their mortality. Yeah, we're all going to die at some point. None of us live forever. It's only we don't know how we're going to die. So you'd have to try and think, how would I like to be treated if I was diagnosed with cancer? What I would, You'd probably want things to stay the same. You'd want, probably want your friends to stay the same. And that's why people don't tell anyone, because they don't want people feeling sorry for them. You know, they just want things to be normal, even though what's going on inside them isn't normal. They want a normal relationship with their family. They don't want to see their wives or their husbands or their children or their grandchildren or their best friends looking at them in with pity, upset. They don't want to see that. They want to see you how you used to be. And I know that's hard, but you have to remember when they've had to disclose it or whether it's the hospital who's told you, you know, you need to try and be as normal as possible, as similar to how you were before you knew the diagnosis, because it's the same person. You know, a matter of seconds when you receive that news doesn't mean that your whole world has to change. It will change eventually. But it, with that moment, just try to be as normal as possible for the cancer sufferer, especially when it's terminal. Um, what else did I want to say? Why some people seem to avoid people with cancer. They do not know what to say for comfort. They feel helpless. Some folks cannot stand to feel helpless. And it's hard to avoid that feeling when a friend has cancer. They may feel like they can't make a difference or that they have nothing to offer. Some people aren't content if they can't fix something. And you'll find that with a lot of men, if they can't fix it, they don't want to have, um, they feel helpless because it's their role to try and put things right. And in this kind of situation, they can't. So they might stay away or they might choose not to face it. Um, I've already talked about survivor's guilt. Um, denial, friends may see in you 
what might happen to them. If cancer can happen to you, it can also happen to me. And so they ignore you. Um, it's their way of dealing with the fact that it could happen to them. So they just shut it out. Awkwardness. There are some people who feel socially awkward in these situations. And cancer is more than they can or face, will or face. There are people who've never gone through tragedy before. So they don't have an idea of what to say or do. Your friend may worry about saying the wrong thing and may simply just drop you out of their, li of their lives. Selfishness. Unfortunately, some friends aren't good at sharing attention. Perhaps they're jealous of your other friends spending more time with you. It seems a bit immature, but it happens. We're all human. Uh, this might result from a lack of attention in childhood and deep insecurity or simply being out of touch with reality. Whatever the reason, it cuts deeply when someone cannot move out of the spotlight long enough to be a real friend. Sometimes they just don't care. Perhaps a friend or even a family member is a great pal when it's time for a movie night or happy hour. But when it when the chips are down, they scarper. You know, you're cramping their style when you're not when you can't be how you used to be. And there's lots of friends like that. Well, friends in quotes. As long as you're available to go out with them, it's fine. But as soon as the chips are down and, you, you know, you've got something wrong with you, they just, you know, throw you to the curb and stay in touch with cancer sufferers. It's not contagious. You can't catch it. It's not like leprosy. You know, hold them, touch them, talk to them, smile with them, make them feel loved. Don't make them feel guilty. You don't have to treat them with kid gloves, you know, as though you're walking on eggshells. They're no different to how they were before, only that something is happening inside their body. They're experiencing changes. That's the only difference. And the fact that you know when it's happening or you might have an idea when it's happening, that's the only difference between you and them. Because something might happen to you and you don't know it. You don't know when it's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to, God forbid, have a road accident or something. So just pretend it's you. How would you like to feel? How would you like to be treated? And like I said, the only difference between them and us is the fact that they probably know about their mortality more than we do. Um, silence is OK. You can sit with them in silence, hold their hands, be affectionate, you know, play with their arms. You could bring in games. You know, you can read them a story. You know, whatever you used to do before, just keep it up. Find things to laugh about. I've said that. Laughter is great. It's very healing. If you need to cry, like I said, go somewhere quiet. They don't really want, they don't need to see you cry. Um, they know you care. Crying sometimes is seen as proving that you're crying over them and you're sad and you're sorry. They don't need to see that. So you do, if you're going to cry, go somewhere as a cry. Don't think about that person. Don't think about yourself. If you're overwhelmed, excuse yourself. Oh, I'm just going to get a cup of tea. I'm just going to get some chocolate. I'm just going to get something. I'll be back in a moment. And when you recoup, you go back with your smile and holding their hands or whatever it is you, is you do. It's really, really difficult, I know. But it's something we've got to do for them. So their memories of you are not one of regret or remorse or you know, unhappiness or they feel as though they've let you down. You don't want them to feel as though they let you down in their last moments. And don't blame them for abandoning you. Oh, why did you leave me? You're leaving me. I can't, don't want you to leave me. They feel bad enough already. We know that they're going. It's not their fault and it's not your fault. So don't make them feel bad for dying. You know, nobody wants to die. So, you know, just stick with them. Don't accuse them of anything. Don't blame them for anything. Worst of all, yes, you will feel as though they're abandoning you, especially if it's a parent or a husband or a spouse. But don't tell them that's how you feel and don't blame them. Um, yeah, I hope that's helpful. And um, yeah, I wanted to tell you, talk about their achievements and um, and that, the good memories. I think I mentioned that actually. And that's all for now. I hope that was useful because, like I said, I don't see many things about cancer because it does seem to be taboo. And I just thought I needed to talk about it and bring it out in the open. Bye bye.